everyone, it's Rita and today we are doing a haul video. So I have about two months worth of books here. So I know y'all can't see it, but I got like a three foot stack of books right here. So um, honestly, most of them don't remember what they're about. So I'm basically just gonna be telling you that I bought them. So yeah. And I got some peppermint tea today because it's just one of those days. First book is Milk and Honey by Rupi Kaur. Kaur? I know I'm not pronouncing that right. I never do. Um, this is a book of poetry. And I actually started reading it last night. And I, I like it. It's... um. I think it's called free verse where like it doesn't rhyme um, but there's four chapters the hurting the loving the breaking and the healing and I'm like 98% sure that this is the author's personal story because it it definitely sounds very personal I feel like poetry in general is a very personal thing um, so yeah this is just, it's such a pretty little book and it's got like these sketch drawings in it, which I really appreciate. Like, I really like, I like books that have pictures in them. I guess I'm still a five-year-old at heart. So yes, that is book number one. Rules of the Road by Joan Boer, Bauer. I don't, this is an old book. It won the 98 Los Angeles Times Book Prize. 98 was the year I was born, so this is an old book. Not really old, it's not old, because I'm not old, but you know what I mean. Um, and this is about uh, two women who take a road trip together, which now that I'm saying it, it sounds kind of like Thelma and Louise, but this one, it's, about, it's supposed to be about Madeline Gladstone, the elderly president of Gladstone Shoe Stores, hires Jenna as her driver for this summer. Jenna leaps at the chance right into the driver's seat and that begins a cross-country adventure from Chicago to Dallas where she and Mrs. Gladstone learn a lot about the rules of the road and the rules of life. So, um, yeah, this sounded kind of cool and like it won a, you know, a big book award and it was $2. So, uh, a $2 book that won a, a big award, why not? Okay, so <laughs> I do not read graphic novels. I don't read comics. I never have. I have never desired to. They confuse me. I don't know how to read them, especially the ones that are backwards. But all that being said, I want to start reading them. So uh, when I went to the bookstore, um, I looked in the clearance section and I picked up this book. This is called Dazzle. Minari Endo. I have no idea. Anyway, this is book number one, and they had like 10 of them on the clearance shelf. So I figure if I like this one, I can go back and get the other ones. And this was $3. So I'm like, you know, why not? And it, it sounds like it's the, the back made it sound like it's kind of a love story in a comic book form romance and danger and all that stuff. So I, I don't know. I don't know how I'm gonna like this. I think I'm gonna have to watch have to watch a YouTube video on how to read the comic because I think there's like a special format. Like you start at the because it's like the opposite of how we normally read books in here in the the states and like the Western world in general. Like pretty sure you start on the right hand side for comics and you like read this way, but then when you get to this side, do you go back like a zigzag or do you like? I don't know we'll see that should be an interesting read all right uh next up we have tithe tiff i don't know a modern fairy tale by holly black um i really don't know what this one's about it says it's about a 16 year old modern nomad Finds yourself on an unwilling pawn in an ancient power struggle between two rival fairy kingdoms. A struggle that could very well mean her death. Yeah, so 
I don't know. It kind of sounds, I've been really into like fairy, like not fairies in particular, but like, I don't know. I guess this kind of like genre, like fairies and witches and like the occult right now. So I don't know. They look kind of interesting. Okay. <clears throat> so Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. This is one of those books that I have been meaning to read for the longest time. And when I was in high school, I would always see it in the, the library, but I just never picked it up. I don't know why. My little sister has already read it and she really liked it. Um, and I found this, again, $3 on the clearance shelf. It does have the movie cover on it, which I'm not too crazy about. I would have rather have the original cover, but I mean, the story in the side is gonna be the same and it still has all of the pictures. So that's all that really matters. And I did watch the movie and I was not a fan. Didn't like it. I thought it was kind of weird. Hoping the book is better. Cause I know there's a few of them. I wanna say there's like four or something, but yeah so it, it's basically about like a mysterious island and there's all these children that have all these peculiar powers and miss peregrine peregrine she protects them like she has them encased in this like time bubble or something like that so that the school or the house or whatever it is doesn't get blown up and i think it's like world war ii and someone from our time manages to like find a way into this castle and into their world so yeah all right next is between shades of gray by ruta zapetti again three dollars <laughs> i feel like i buy a lot of three dollar books which is okay because you know discount books are the best so um salt to the sea it's not salt of the sea it's salt to the sea another rudis petty book is on my november tbr and i'm actually planning on listening to it as an audiobook i kind of wanted to get it in a book form but they didn't have a clearance copy but they did have this book and i'm like well i might as well get it because it's by the same author and if i like her then it's great it's awesome and when I was checking out, the cashier said that he read this book in high school and he loved it. And she actually came and like talked to their class and he got like a signed copy of this book. I'm like, oh, that's cool. It's nice to hear that someone else liked it and appreciated it. So I didn't even read the back, honestly, when I got it. Cause I'm like, I don't know, it was $3. So it sounds like it's set in like World War II era. Okay. <clears throat> Next up we have This Is How It Always Is by Lori Frankel. Frankel? Um, trying to remember when I got this. Oh, I got this off of um, Book Outlet last month. It was actually my first order from them and I really liked what what I got and what I saw and you know all the books all the books that I got were like three to four bucks well three to five bucks really this one sounded interesting because it is set like the story is about a family who has a transgender child and kind of it sounded like it was from the family's perspective like it was third person um but the, the kid's name is Claude. Uh, he's five years old. He has five brothers and loves peanut butter sandwiches. He also loves wearing a dress and dreams of being a princess. When he tells his parents that, you know, he wants to be a girl, his parent, it says that his parents are not ready, they're not ready to share that with the world. And soon the entire family is keeping Claude's secret until one day it explodes. So. That sounded interesting. I've never read a book that was centered around a transgender person. I'm sure that they're out there. Uh, it's 
I don't know. I've just, I've never read a book. I've never, never heard of a book that has a character like that. So that should be really interesting to read. Peppermint is the best. I'm slowly getting more comfortable talking to the camera. I have to cover up my, cause I film on my phone. I have to cover it up with the dish towel. So I'll actually like look at the camera. Otherwise I get distracted by myself and I don't know how to talk. So yeah. <laughs> All right, next up we have The Raven King by Maggie S. D. Vader. Steve Vader. Hey, stop it you two. Be nice to each other. Cooper and Mia, my dogs. Come here, Mia. Come here. Want you say hi? Want you say hi to the camera? Say hi, pretty girl. Mwah. She's so pretty. Say hi, Mia. Cooper's too fat. He doesn't want to come over here. Do you? You're too comfortable sitting over there on the couch. Okay, so Raven King. I got this last month. I'm pretty sure I didn't haul it yet. If I did, I'm sorry. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that I didn't. So, uh, yeah, I had gotten the first book in the series last year and then I had finished, like I was, and then I started listening to the series, um, as an audiobook. So I was like, well, I mean, I, I, I'm going to listen to this. I don't need to get the other books, but then I found this on the clearance shelf and I'm like, you know what? Why not? I'll just, I'll just get it. And then I ended up reading the Raven King as a book and I liked it better reading it than listening to it. So that worked out well. So yeah, this is just the fifth book in the Raven cycle series. And then next we got blue Lily, Lily blue, which is the fourth book in the series. Again, clearance shelf. Shout out to Books A Million for having a great clearance selection. All right. Next we have A Great and Terrible Beauty by Libba Bray. So I got, what is it called? I don't know if I have it on my shelf. Oh yes, I don't know if you can see that, but The Diviners by Libba Bray. And I've been meaning to read it and I haven't read it yet, but, um, I want, like, I feel like The Diviners is such a big book. It's kind of intimidating me right now. I'm like, I don't want to commit to a 500 page book right now. And so I'm like, you know what? Um, I'm gonna, you know, try something else of hers. And this is, well, this is a 400 page book. So not much better. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I really don't know what this one's about cause I bought it last month and it's been a while since I read it back, but it sounded cool. I mean, it sounded like something I would enjoy, but I'd have to be like in the right mood to read it. So, yes. All right, next up we have An American Marriage, a novel by, oh God, I'm gonna butcher this, Tahari Jones. Oh, I guess that's not so bad. It's an Oprah's 2018 selection book club book. You know, if it's an Oprah book club book, it's probably going to be good and geared towards 40 year old white women. But you know what? I'm, I'm an old lady at heart. So I don't know. I thought I might like it. <laughs> and this is another book that I got from Book Outlet. And it's a love story. So kind of interesting. I don't know. It's not usually the type of book that I would go for. Like that sounds just like fiction fiction and I feel like I gravitate more towards historical fiction or young adult fiction or, you know, I, I don't know. That sounds kind of just like fiction fiction. I'm pretty sure the only reason I got it was, uh, was because it had the word love story in it. Okay, next we have Going Bovine and this is another Libba Bray book. I don't know what this is about, but it won an award. <laughs> And it's a New York Times bestseller. And I'm, I'm really a sucker for new, anything that's on the New York Times bestseller list. Probably just because I haven't read a book that was on there that I didn't like. So if I see that it's on there, I'll usually pick it up just because it's on there. Um, 
16 year old Cameron wants to get through high school and life in general with minimal effort before he's given some bad news he's going to die. Hope arrives in the wing form of Dulcie, a loopy punk angel, possible hallucination with a bad sugar habit. She tells Cam there's a cure if he's willing to go in search of it. With the help of Gonzo, a death obsessed video gaming dwarf and a yard gnome who just might be the Viking god Baldur, Cam sets off on the mother of all road trips through Twisted America and to the heart of what matters most. This sounds like such a trippy book just from the back. And I like trippy books. So yeah, I, that's why I picked it up. Cause I read the back, I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> it sounds so weird, <laughs> but like just weird enough to where I would like it. I'm sorry if my dogs are making too much noise. I don't know if y'all can hear that, but hey, you two stop it. Be nice to each other. It snowed yesterday in November, which I guess is normal for most parts of the country, but like, it's still weird for me just because I, I didn't grow up in a state where it snows and now I'm in Kentucky and it snowed and I'm just like, snow! I feel like, again, a five-year-old <laughs> when it snows. <gasps> Cause I just like want to go outside and like dance around in the snow. And I did last night and my, my toes froze so bad, it hurt. But school got canceled today. That was cool. I mean, I had I had an exam today, uh, so uh, they're trying to reschedule it for tomorrow. So we'll see. But I don't know. It's kind of cool to have the day off. I wasn't really ready for that test, anyways. And here I am, not studying, making a video instead. But you know what? It's okay. It's all right. Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. So. This has the movie cover on it. I don't like when they put the movie covers on the books. It bugs me. I want to see the artwork. I don't want to see the movie cover. If I want to see the movie cover, I would watch the movie. That's just me, probably. So I love, love, love Ag Agatha Christie. I started reading her books when I was in high school. And she's one of those authors where I can't figure out the ending. Like... And in a mystery book, that's what I want. I don't want to be able to figure out halfway through. I want to be outsmarted by the author. And Agatha Christie does that every single time. Like, I feel like there's so many plot twists in her stories. And they just, I, I don't usually go for mysteries. But I will read Agatha Christie. Uh, I don't even know what Murder on the Orient Express is. Other than that, I'm sure someone gets murdered on a train and she solves the mystery of what happens. Okay, next up, We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. I don't know why, but like when I saw the author's name, I'm like, I've heard that before. I don't think it was for this book, but I'm like, I know that name. That's why I got it. Cause I'm like, I, I recognize it. I feel like I've heard it before. I don't know if it was people's loving they're, I don't even know if it's a man or a woman. A woman. I don't, people, I don't know if people like her books or didn't like her books. I literally just got it because I recognize the name from somewhere. And it's a New York Times bestseller. So of course I'm going to get it. And like I read the, well, this one didn't have it. I picked up the hard copy in the bookstore and I like read the back of, or the inside cover of it. But this one doesn't have it because it's a paperback. And this was on clearance again. $275. It's not bad. Um, from what I remember, it has something to do with a family that always goes to like a certain beach or lake house or something like that. And everyone's been keeping secrets from each other. And then suddenly I think all the secrets come out and everyone's just dealing with the aftermath. I think. I'm really not sure. That's what I vaguely remember from reading the back last month. What, Cooper? You mean to throw a toy? Okay. Don't bring it back. Let's bring it back. Okay. Next up, Day of Tears, a novel in dialogue by Julius Lester. Um, and this won Coretta Scott King Award. I've never heard of that. Um, 
But if it wins an award, then it's got to be good. It sounds like like an important book. It doesn't exactly sound like something that might necessarily be fun to read, but it, it sounds like something that would be good to read. You know, like you, you get something from it. It's about a slave and his family. It sounded, it sounded good when I read the back a month ago. I'm not gonna sit and read the entire back on camera because there's no point in doing that. Cooper! Cooper wants me to throw his toy. He's chewing the ear off of it. Why are you chewing the ear off of it? Did you hear that? So violent. Next up, we have The Nightingale by, oh god, there's a sticker over her name, Christine Hanna. This is another chunky book. Like, how many pages is this? A lot. 550. <laughs> uh, I don't know when I'm going to be reading this just because of how big it is and how intimidating. And like, I would rather read a whole bunch of little books so I can say I read more books than read one really big one. Which sounds horrible, but it's true. I feel like this is a book where you either love it or hate it. It is historical fiction and it's about two sisters. It tells like the side of each sister and one like wants to like stay and like just try to help people. And the other one like wants to go off and like, I don't know do something else, I think. Like more rad like one's more conservative and one's more not radical, but like that's what I'm looking for. I don't know. My brain's not working right now. It's probably a good thing I didn't take that test today. <laughs>